I've been out to Johnson Lumber before, but today I was invited to come out and spend the day touring the facility with the Johnson family. And it's going to be killer. I'm so excited because I get to hear the stories about how Johnson started, where they came from, and check out some of the old vintage equipment that they still use today in milling lumber. Follow along. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Holy smoke. So this is strictly for resawing? Correct. And... Yep. Can you tell me how old it is? How old do you think it is? That, I'm going to say, is probably the 1950s, 1940s. 50s? Yep. And what's the capacity of this saw? Capacity, the, the width, the largest board you can do is 18 inches wide. Okay. And up to six inches thick. And what size is that blade, do you know? I believe it's about a 50 footer. 50 feet? But it's about six inches. Six in inches width. wide? Yep. Wow. How often do you have to change the blade out? If we run a heavy low, depending on if it's hard maple, oak, or poplar, or whatnot, um, you can go a day with it. And, yeah? Yep. And they'll, they typically just change it out I, you for know, the next job. I'm not a huge fan of changing the blade on my bandsaw. Yeah. So I got to imagine this takes a minute. <laughs> it eh? does. It takes more than one man. Yeah, it takes two guys at least to carry the blade. But yeah, it's a, it's a chore. And what do we have over here? Uh, this is our, what we call our D-line, basically because they're doubles. Okay. These, these particular planers have a cutter head on the top and the bottom. So as a board goes through, we're actually cutting the top and the bottom at the same time. Oh. Now, we weren't happy with just having one of those. We needed two of those because typically when you're sheeting lumber, planing it down, you've got to run it several times. Well, for production, we thought, okay, why don't we link them together? Sounds like an easy enough thing to do, but you do have to synchronize that conveyor in the middle to the second planer as well we can do in one basic pass with two men, we can get it right down to the finished size we want. Wow, and they're right both synchronized. They're both synchronized to go at the same rate, same feed rate. Now, how long ago did that come about as far as setting them up in, in sequence with each other? Yeah, that was probably in the 70s when we finally synchronized it together, yeah. <laughs> that would have been my, uh, that would have been my father and uncles that did that. You yeah. know, that's the thing when you're talking about a company that's well over a hundred years old yeah right the history of it really is abundant it's everywhere you look it is there are very few companies that are over a hundred years old and even fewer that are generational and still owned and managed by the founding family lauren lewis johnson founded the ll johnson lumber company in 1909 they specialized in hardwood and within a few short years, they were producing over a half a million feet a year. Their focus on customer needs and willingness to adapt over the years has truly paved the way for their success and longevity. So what's this called? Uh, this is basically it's a Taylor glue wheel. It is a 16 foot, <laughs> one of the largest glue wheels they make. So we can 16 foot. We can do 16 foot panels. Yes. You do a lot of this type of work. We do. It's becoming a bigger, bigger market for us. We'll do two to three hundred of these at a time. Can we uh, follow this through to the next step? Certainly. That's exactly where this is going to be going. Well, those boards that you saw over there coming out of the glue wheel, they're now going to do a finish sanding on them. So, but this is not just sanding. No. Actually, the first process in this machine is a helical head that is cutting off the glue lines and debris. Then the second pass, or the second head, is a sanding, a wide up head. Wow. And this is in one unit. All one pass, yep. This has to save you guys quite a bit of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you can see you can do multiple boards in the width and everything because it's so large. The largest panel we can do is up to 42 inches. That's huge. It is. Right? While Tim and I were walking through the shop and he was showing me the facilities, I noticed they were running some different lumber and I asked what that was about and he said, yeah, you know, customer came in, picked out the lumber he wanted and we're milling it to spec for him. And I said, is that normal? And he said, happens all the time. 
So that's pretty convenient. You can go pick out the lumber you need and they'll mill it to spec for you, usually while you wait. This guy went out to lunch and when he comes back, he's gonna be ready to rock and roll. It's a 40 inch wide, plus planer, that's two sides at a time. They're doing a light bass right now. Beating the board is a live edge. There's yeah. a lot of character to it. They're gonna take minimal cuts. So small bits down, at a time. Get it down, yep, small bits at a time to get it smooth. And it, this is cutting both sides? Yeah. There are not a lot of places that could do this. That's beautiful. Next, we'll take it to our uh, dowel machine. This is by far the oldest machine we have in the building right now. This is a dowel machine? Yes, yeah, a dowel maker. He's going to take that square blank, feed it through there. It'll come out in a smooth round. Get out of here. Look at that. That is really, really cool. And this is the oldest machine you guys have? This is the oldest machine, yep. 1909, same age as the company. 1909, that's crazy. Yeah, that's so cool. July 28th, 1909. The money maker. <laughs> That's fast. Mm -hmm. the board, I'll cut the leg. You know, but if you're if you're doing that much work, you don't want to be. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. You got a miter box or whatnot. Yeah, exactly. That's a production miter box for sure. It's just yep. foot operated. It comes out. Yep. And you said there's two strokes to it, so one position will just shortcut. Shortcut and long cut. Yeah. So you got to do a wide board. That's why you, you, you know again for production. You don't need to come out all that distance. Right. You can set it to the short and set it to the deep if you really have to. And what's the overall width, do you think? Uh, I believe 18 inches the max. You 18 cut on inches. Yep. Wow. I was blown away when Connor told me they had six warehouses full of material. And we visited every single one of them. You can show up there, go through all the material, find the exact product you need to get your project done, and if you need some help, you can grab an employee and they'll go through it and sort and stack for you. Yeah, I'm just amazed at the, at the quantity of everything you have here. And it's really, really thorough, you know? Like I noticed, this is eight quarter walnut mm -hmm. and this looks to be right around 18 inches wide. Yeah, we've got some, some really nice inventory here and some big pieces. That's crazy. Yeah. Like I, I don't think I've ever seen that much of it in one place before. That's pretty cool. So we're gonna check out another warehouse. We are, yeah, we've got another warehouse on site that I'd love to show you. All right, let's go. Oh, look at this. Yep, this is one of our two plywood warehouses. This is uh, another one that we consider to be the broken pack plywood warehouse. Okay. So uh, again, a customer could come in here and they could sort through a stack of plywood and try to find what uh, veneer style fits their needs. Yeah, this is a lot of options. Yeah, this is a huge selection of plywood. So this is our storeboard area. These are pieces of wood that have been machined to a uniform thickness right. and then ripped straight along one edge. The reason we don't clean up the other side is we're giving you the maximum yield of the board. Sure. So we don't have conventional one by fours or one by sixes. You could have a piece that's anywhere from three inches wide up to 18, 20 inches wide. This is a heck of a selection too. I mean, you got everything here. All kinds of different sizes, all varieties. Yep, lots of domestics, lots of exotics, anything from alder to zebra wood. I would think that coming to a lumber yard can be really stressful for some people. You know, like I can remember the first time I went to a, a steel yard, right? And you don't have all the answers. You don't even know the questions necessarily. You just want some material. So, I think this could be really overwhelming for people. 
Absolutely. I can see that with people coming in for the very first time, like yeah. you're mentioning. Um, the father who's trying to do a birdhouse with his son for the first time <laughs> or somebody who's never even seen a table saw or knows what a joiner is, they can definitely get lost in this location if we didn't have the appropriate staff. And I think that's one of the things we've tried to take care of is have knowledgeable people here ready to guide you along the way, step by step. I think that's awesome. That's, it's those kinds of things that, I don't know, set you apart, make it easy, right? Now this is impressive. Oh, oh man. Welcome to Johnson's Workbench. You know, I think I've said the word impressive more than a dozen times today. Because every time I look at something, I'm just blown away by it. Look at all of this. What a huge variety. Yeah, we, uh, we carry a little bit of everything for the woodworker. Wow. There is stationary power tools galore. I've got hand tools. We've got all the hardware and the finished product to get your project from start to finish. We are to the point now where we want to be a destination for all your woodworking needs. Yeah, you got it covered, right? I'm not sure that Lauren Lewis Johnson ever imagined his company would last this long, but I am sure he'd be very proud to know that five generations later, this company is still going strong, still adapting, and still making sure that the customer needs are taken care of.